Hi friends and welcome to the video. If you've never seen my face before, I'm Olivia and as you see behind me, I am a fragrance enthusiast, reviewer, whatever you'd like to call me. And if you have seen my face before, happy summer my friends. It is finally here and I am so excited because today we're going to be starting a new series on this channel. Throughout summer, I'm going to be dropping videos giving you guys suggestions on summer appropriate perfumes of each category. So today we're going to be talking about clean and fresh fragrances. And I'm very excited because today, for the very first time on my YouTube, we have a sponsor for today's video, and that is none other than Teddy Blake. Teddy Blake is a luxury leather handbag company that offers 100% Italian leather handbags at affordable prices. And this is in the style Ava, and this is the nine inch, which I think is the perfect size for a going out sort of dressed up bag. And this is in the color fuchsia. It has all of this beautiful gold detailing, even a little zipper on the back. And on the inside, you have a small zippered pocket and a suede lining. They'll be having a 4th of July sale starting on the 30th of this month, going all the way until the 5th of July. And some of the bags are going to be all the way up to 70% off. So if you're looking for a new leather handbag, check out the sale. I'm going to have all the details in the description box below. Thank you, Teddy Blake, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Let's get back into the perfume. So we're going to start off with the more affordable options because I know a lot of the times when I'm suggesting perfumes that are three, four hundred dollars, people are like, Olivia, please get a grip. So we're going to start off with things that are under one hundred dollars. So the most affordable that I have in my collection is going to be Triple Zero from Le Mans Gourmand. And you can find Le Mans Gourmand fragrances in Urban Outfitters, and this is only $25. So let me tell you how this smells. So in the beginning, you get this beautiful blast of citrus that's coming from bergamot. And then in comes some very sheer, delicate florals. So if you're sensitive to florals, this is not going to be heavy. It's water lily and freesia, which tend to be pretty aquatic, so they're very refreshing. And then in the base, you have a sandalwood. Now, this is not a dry sandalwood. This is a bit of a creamy sandalwood. This is perfect for that day-to-day -day running errands. Just want to toss something on, smell good, simple, and it's not too challenging. And for 25 bucks, this is such a cute little size that you can chuck in your bag and reapply as much as you want. Next, coming in at $64, I'm sure you guys have heard all about this. This is Glossier U, and this is a beautiful, powdery, musky fragrance. This is so signature scent worthy, and this lasts an incredible amount of time. This has notes of iris, pink pepper, ambroxan, and ambrette. So you get a lovely powderiness that is a little bit reminiscent of a modern day cosmetic smell. It doesn't smell like vintage makeup by any means, but that pink pepper gives just a little bit of spiciness. And I honestly wonder if they have reformulated this over the years, because I owned a bottle of this when this very first came out, and I felt like the pink pepper was not as noticeable. And so I kind of liked that version better because I'm a little bit sensitive to pink pepper, but rest assured that when you wear this on the skin, it mixes with your chemistry and it isn't too sharp. So if you want some Something that's kind of cool and undetectable, but you'll smell fresh, I would go with Glossier U. Next on the list is by the brand Abbott, and this is called Crescent Beach, and this is coming in at $84, and this is a clean, vegan, cruelty-free brand out of Sephora. This is your quintessential clean laundry detergent-like fragrance. This is actually a dupe of Byredo's Blanche, and Byredo Blanche is quite a bit more expensive and doesn't really last that long. And this one smells so similar to it. I personally adore those fragrances. I know some people say they're overrated, like your clothes already smell clean. No, I want to smell like detergent. I want to smell like I just pulled my clothes out of a hot dryer and put them on all day long. It isn't soapy or powdery, it's just detergent. There's no other way to say it. Check this one out at Sephora. That is Crescent Beach from Abbott. Next, coming in at $96, I'm sure you guys have heard of this one before because I feel like this has gone absolutely viral online. This is Missing Person by Fleur. You know when you lend your sweater to a person that you really care about and it smells like just the clean musk of their skin and you sit there and you're just like smelling the sweater over and over and over? It kind of reminds me of like having my first boyfriend 
Lauren in high school and I would take his sweater and I would just sniff it for so long. Looking back, teenage boys probably don't smell good, but in my mind, it was almost this like pheromone type quality. This is just that. This smells like clean skin. This doesn't smell like soap or laundry detergent. This has musk. This has a sandalwood that gives it some warmth. Now some clean fresh fragrances can almost have a cooling type effect. This has a warming sensation to it. It's not going to project like crazy and it's not going to be super duper long lasting or like a beast mode type fragrance. That is Missing Person by Fleur. And the very last that I'll talk about in our more affordable under dollars category is Must 12 by Kayali. I tried to look this up on the Sephora website and I no longer saw the full size bottle, nor did I see it on the Kayali website. I hate to say it and I'm not going to put any false information out there, so don't quote me on this, but I think that this might be discontinued. If you can get your hands on this before it goes away, because I think it's going to go away, this is the most beautiful ethereal musk fragrance. This is going to be on your more slightly floral feminine side. So this is a musk with some sheer florals that are also a little bit aquatic, but this has the added note of vanilla and sandalwood. So you're getting a little bit of sweetness, and this is very gentle, but very, very feminine and just pretty. There's no other word to describe it than pretty. If you don't have this, and this sounds interesting to you, get it before it's gone because I think it's going. I'm so upset. So the next category that I'm going to talk about is molecular fragrances. These are fragrances that are going to work with your individual chemistry and are going to give you a very unique scent. So on their own, they might be unassuming and not really smell like much, but then you'll see the magic once you put them on. So I have two in this category, and we're gonna start with the more simple out of the two. And that is Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. And what's really interesting about this fragrance is this is comprised of one note, which is Cetalox, and that is the synthetic version of Ambergris. And if you don't know what Ambergris is, I have talked about it on this channel a couple times, but I'm gonna go over it because I think it's fascinating. So Ambergris is actually a substance that's formed in the intestinal tract of a sperm whale and it's a waxy thick substance that's created to help protect their internal organs during digestion when they eat things like bones and it's either vomited or excrement of the sperm whale and a very very long time ago this was used in perfumery because it has a very fixative quality meaning it makes perfumes last a very very long time and the note can be perceived very differently from nose to nose so i have actually smelled genuine ambergris this thick disgusting wax in person and to me it smells completely different from the modern day iteration. It smells almost fecal, it smells animalic, and to me it smells horrible. But then you have this modern day iteration where we are taking that fixative quality and we are making it practical because I don't think anyone wants to smell like that. It's no longer really used in fragrances. You have things like Cetalox, which is what this is made of. Rest assured, this does not smell fecal or like vomit. <laughs> This smells very, very unique on everybody who wears it because it's only one singular note. So some people will perceive this as a little bit salty, a little bit sweet, a little bit woody. It's hard for me to describe because it smells different on everybody. And what I've noticed is it smells different depending on my body chemistry, where I'm at in my cycle, all of those things really attribute to what this smells like. So to me, usually, this smells like a soft, clean, woody fragrance. And this is a fragrance that a lot of people go anosmic to, meaning they go nose blind. After a while, they stop smelling it. People will say, I don't get this fragrance. It doesn't smell like anything. But when it's on you, it's really more for the people experiencing you as opposed to you as the wearer yourself. So other people will smell this and they will think that your natural chemistry smells incredible. And one little trick is because this is a large molecule, any fragrance that you put on top of this will last so long. I actually use this as a layering tool, as kind of a 
primer. So the next in our more molecular type fresh fragrances is one of my favorite fragrances of all time, and this is Another 13 by Le Labo. So this is quite a bit more complex than the last one that I just talked about, and often in videos they are compared as being similar, and in my opinion they bear a certain resemblance, but they certainly don't smell similar in my opinion, because this is a little bit more masculine. There's something very, very sexy about this fragrance. Again, this is going to be another one of those fragrances that you might not be able to smell it on yourself any longer. When other people smell this, they will be able to smell it for 14 hours plus. And I had a woman at the grocery store follow me from aisle to aisle to aisle before she finally got up the courage to ask me what perfume I was wearing, and it was this. This thing has the most intoxicating scent. So let me try to get into the specifics because as a molecular fragrance, it can be a little bit hard to describe. So in the beginning, you get some citruses, you also get apple and pear that give it a little hint of sweetness, but by no means is this a sweet fragrance. And then you have this ambrette that gives it this beautiful calming effect along with a moss, and I think that moss is what gives it this sexy, slightly masculine quality. And then in the base comes in that Cetalox that I talked about before that makes it very long lasting, along with Isoe Super, which smells like light, fresh, woody, along with an Embretolide, which is a beautiful, slightly warm, ambery scent. This is masculine, it is sexy, it is clean, and it is very, very, very long lasting. This is like the secret sauce. This is like the hot sauce on top of your meal. Like every fragrance smells better when I put this on top of it. So although pricey, absolutely worth it. I, would, I bought this with my own money. Let me make that clear. I bought this with my own money and I will continue to buy Le Labo fragrances because I like them a lot, even though they don't seem to be that popular in the perfume reviewing realm. Staple in my collection. On to the next category, we're going to be talking about the more soapy, clean fragrances. So ones that have that truly white bar soap sort of appeal to them. Starting off with a unique but still very likable fragrance from my collection, and this is from none other than Andrea Mack. And I have talked about Andrea Mack fragrances so many times on this channel, but this is an Icelandic house, and I just think their fragrances are masterfully blended. I think that they smell incredible, and they're unique but somehow still very, very enjoyable. So this is called Ceramic. So this has a delicate floral component to it, while also maintaining a little bit of a green element. Element. And this is soapy, but definitely not overwhelming for those of you who are just kind of getting into the soapy realm. This would be your introductory soapy fragrance. This has a clean, fresh vibe to it. But as I spoke about earlier, some musk fragrances can be warming and some can be cooling. And there's something about this that almost has a mineral clay-like element to it that feels very cooling. Think of the smell in pottery making class when you have your hands in clay and you're shaping a vase. That kind of beautiful dry mineral element that's a little bit cooling along with a soapy, lightly floral touch with a little hint of greenness. This is top three of my entire review here. I think this is absolutely stunning, so get your nose on it if you haven't tried it. Moving on to a very soapy fragrance in my collection. This is newer to me, and this is called Invisible Touch by La Perla. So this is an aldehydic fragrance, and if you don't know what I mean by aldehydic, aldehydic is something that was utilized in a lot of older scent profiles, like in Chanel Number no. 5, that give it that soapy, clean, fresh, almost fizzy, sparkling champagne sort of quality. What I realized with aldehyde is I find them so beautiful because they offer this vintage quality, but oftentimes in the older scent profiles, they're coupled with really heavy, nauseating florals. Can tend to remind you a little bit of your grandmother. Although it has aldehydes, it's not coupled with a heavy jasmine or a heavy rose. It has some softer floral elements. And to give you the long short of what I think this smells like, this smells like luxury baby shampoo and baby powder. And I know that sounds Sounds like, Olivia, why would I want to smell like that? Because imagine the sophistication of vintage fragrances and that beautiful soapy clean quality, but you strip it back and you make it modern. I'm gonna warn you guys, 
This is a very powdery, very soapy fragrance. So if you are sensitive to those sort of smells, this is not going to be for you. It is very pricey. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is a very pricey fragrance, but I will say this. You only need one to two sprays and it lasts for a very long time on clothing. So this would be more of an investment piece. So if you're looking for an everyday staple that is going to be very, very long lasting and you don't need to apply a lot of it, this is a great choice. I know that Chanel number no. five is not for everyone because it definitely has a dated vintage type feel to it. And some people really enjoy it and some people cannot stand it. But I challenge you, if you're ever in Sephora, to try out the newer version that is called Chanel number no. five low. So this is their modern take on the very, very classic fragrance. And this strips it back a lot. It's taking away those heavy florals that I was talking about earlier. And this is light, fresh, and sparkling. And it has quite a bit of citrus in it. So it has an invigorating quality along with that soapiness. So you get a clean, sparkling, and slightly citrusy touch. And I personally really like how this smells. And surprisingly enough, a lot of people talk about, oh, Chanel number no. five, like, what men would like that? My husband actually really likes this. Every time I wear it, he's like, oh, you smell amazing. And there's something very refined and very elegant and very womanly about this fragrance, but it is not as matronly, I will say, as Chanel number no. five, the original. And I just wanna give you a little fair warning. Chanel fragrances are one of the most counterfeited fragrances available on the market. So originally I had purchased this from Mercari. When I got the bottle, I could tell something was a little bit off. And so I went into Sephora to compare it with a known authentic bottle and some of the details were wrong. And I actually got, got it authenticated and sent back to Mercari my findings. And and they were able to refund me my money, which is very rare. And that seller actually got shut down because of that. So be very careful. If you're trying to find a deal on this, wait until it is on sale at Sephora during their 20% off sale. That's worth it because you know for sure you're getting an authentic product. Next category is going to be for a more floral fresh lover. So this is called Pure Extreme by Mikalev. And this to me smells like a princess. Delicate, but lasts a very long time. And this is fresh, slightly aquatic, and a little bit sweet, along with very, very delicate florals. Originally, I had tried a sample of this that my friend Sniff with Steph, if you've never seen her stuff, she's a great reviewer on TikTok and on Instagram. She had given me a sample of this, and I passed it on to another one of our friends, and she was like, Olivia, are you sure you really tried that one? because I think you're gonna really like it. And I was like, I, th I think I did. And once I put it on, I was like, oh, give me that sample back. I need that. Oh, this is so pretty. If you were to ever do a his and hers sort of fragrance duo, this along with another 13, musk heaven. Absolutely beautiful. Whereas another 13 is a little masculine. This is the beautiful feminine soft, delicate princess of all musks. Now this next fragrance is in a category all of its own because this is from the brand Noteworthy and this is called 441. And this is very interesting because although this is a clean white musk fragrance, that kind of reminds me of Joe Vaughn white musk, if you guys remember that, that is very old school, or white musk from the body shop. It's a very, very 90s, early 2000s scent. So those of you who remember, you know what I'm talking about, that kind of clean white musk. But then there is something sweet about this. There's almost slight gourmand elements, but because of that musk, this would still be really good in summertime. So if you want something that is warming, very cozy, almost like a cashmere sweater. So our next category is kind of interesting to me. So these are going to be more aromatic musks. And if you don't know what I mean by aromatic, this has a lot of lavender. It has a lot of thyme. So it's going to have almost an herbal type element to it. So this is by the brand Farmacia SS Annunciata, and this is called Fiore di Cotone, which means cotton flower in Italian. And to me, this smells like you're running through cotton fields on the Italian countryside in a fresh white linen shirt, but there is also something a little bit green and herbal in the air. This is an experience. I bought this when I was in Italy, and when I would wear this around, you could kind of see this moment of people turning their heads like, oh my God, like, 
who is that? This just turns heads. And this, because it has a little bit more of that herbal type element, is perfectly unisex. So although very clean laundry type scent, fresh cotton bud type scent, it has a little bit of a masculine and feminine quality in it. So one very similar to that is the next one, which is by Juicebox, and this is called Visionary Eye. I love Juicebox fragrances because I love the concepts that they come out with. So this is inspired by David Bowie. All of their fragrances are inspired by musicians or pieces of musical art. On top, you can see that it's a little record, and this is an unusual size. It's 78 ml, and that actually correlates to the number of rotations that a record makes. So I love those little fun details because this is a beautiful, beautiful house and every single one I have ever tried from this house last until you wash your clothes, until you shower. They do, do not come off and they smell incredible. So this is very similar where it also has some very similar notes as the last one, but what makes this different is this has a lot of iris that gives it a very strong punch of powderiness. So if you want something that's fresh cotton, clean laundry, fresh, herbal, but then also has a beautiful fluffy powderiness to it. That's Visionary Eye from Juicebox. Our last category is kind of interesting because this is Piper and Pero Veil, and this has a little bit of fruitiness to it. So in the beginning, you get pear. That gives it this beautiful, juicy, sweet quality while still being a little bit watery and not too suffocating by any means. And this almost has a shower gel type smell to it. So it's clean, but almost think of the type of smell that envelops you when you're in the shower. And this also has a note of champagne. So it also has that little fizzy, sparkling, almost like dry champagne touch. Very unique one, and that is Veil from Piper and Pero. Just as a very quick added bonus, I wanted to show you guys the lotions that I would pair up with these fragrances. I'm not going to go into great detail because I know that this video is already going to be very long, but I wanted to share with you guys some suggestions for lotions that you can use because I know sometimes it can be a little hard to pair your lotion unless it's unscented with a fragrance. So these are the clean and fresh lotions that I have in my collection. First and foremost, Missing Person has a body cream. So if you felt like Missing Person wasn't very long lasting on you, if you layer it with the body cream, it really locks it in all day long. This is the staple. If you're going to purchase anything to go along with your musk fragrances, this, this is the one. Saltwater Breeze from Bath & Body Works. This is going to be your easy breezy, clean ocean air sort of scent. Very similarly is Sea Island Shore from Bath & Body Works. But this takes it in a more fluffy cotton clean laundry sort of direction. If you want something to go along with the more herbal ones, I would go with White T-shirt, also from Bath & Body Works, because this one also has lavender. So it smells like a crisp, freshly laundered white t-shirt. For the more citrusy of the group, I would go with Fresh Getaway because this has ocean air and yuzu. So you have that beautiful, tart, juicy, citrus quality. For the more floral of the group, I would go with One in a Million because this has tuberose, jasmine, and gardenia. So that's gonna give you a really beautiful, soft, but fresh blast of white florals. For the more shower gel type fragrances, I would go with Magnolia Charm. This also has Hair, along with magnolia and cedar, and it literally smells like a fruity clean shampoo. And last on the list is hands down the longest lasting scented lotion and spray from Bath & Body Works. And this is fresh coconut and cotton. And this smells like clean laundry with coconut milk. I know some of these are discontinued, but they always bring them back. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I definitely love the fresh and clean fragrances. So I had a lot of fun talking about it. And tune in next week because we are going to be talking about summer appropriate gourmand fragrances. So until next Saturday, 10 a.m. PST, take care of yourselves, my friends.